Hi, I'm Avni Modi Sarkar. I'm the co-founder of Modi Toys, and you're listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. Yeah. My name is Abhay Dandekar, and I share conversations with talented and interesting individuals linked to the global Indian and South Asian community. It's informal and informative, adding insights to our evolving cultural expressions, where each person can proudly say, trust me, I know what I'm doing. So periodically on Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing, we share a spotlight episode and feature brief chats with an individual from the community about a special topic or cause. This spotlight episode was prompted when I found myself hanging out with my four-year-old niece a few months ago, around the time of the Ganesh Festival celebrations. While I'm undoubtedly her favorite uncle, the real object of her undivided attention and affection that day happened to be a Ganesh plush toy that she was clutching and using to help remind everyone of both Ganesh's birthday and some of the shloka and mantras related to the festivities. So it was really nice to catch up with Avani Modi Sarkar, the co-founder of the award-winning Modi Toys, and chat more about how she decided to use her own parenting experiences and the power of playing with toys to keep Hindu culture and tradition alive for many, many other families. Now, Avani noticed a few years ago, especially as a new parent, that kid-friendly, play-based elements that spoke to the heritage that she cared so much about were lacking and didn't represent the evolving community of South Asian, Hindu, and multicultural families. So along with her brother, she launched Modi Toys in 2018 to diversify the toy box and connect families better through items like plush toys that sing mantras representing different deities, as well as books and rangoli kits, and all ethically and sustainably made in India. When I caught up with her recently to chat, not only did we talk about the experience of being an entrepreneur and the cultural expression and representation that her toys offer, but I was curious to know of any new discoveries that she made about the idea of the toys, especially now that her kids are a little bit older. You know, what's really interesting is that when my brother and I started Modi Toys, our daughters were born a week apart, by the way, they were just turning a year old when we actually got the prototype in hand. And by the time we yeah. actually launched uh, with Modi Toys, like our website, Launch Live, they were close to two years of age, almost a year and a half. And so I feel like we kind of missed out on those initial two years of their lives of what it would have been yeah. like had we had the toys, you know, like from their birth, through, you know, through infancy and stuff. So I wasn't really able to get that full experience until I had my second, my third borns. And yeah. I got to see, like, I got to read them like more of our books. I got to actually give them our toys with, in fact, with our third, with my third one, I was even able to use our crib mobile that we had launched by then. Hmm. So we were yeah. able to, you know, incorporate more of the toys and products that we actually have that we've been creating for all these other kids with our own kids um, later on over the years. And I think that was an aha moment for me because I was like, wow, this actually really does work. <laughs> we're right. not just selling a pipe dream here. Because, you yeah. know, of course, like at the time we had this vision that it wouldn't it be cool if we could incorporate culture through play. And yeah. it was kind of a hypothesis that we, we kind of bet on, right? That this should theoretically work because we've seen so many other plush toys that play, you know, nursery rhymes or the alphabet. So sure. if kids can learn through play, if kids can learn through music, then they should also be able to learn mantras, right? Because they're not making yeah. a distinction between a 4,000 year old like sacred mantra versus like the nursery rhyme to them. It's all like just new information. So it was really, I think that that's been the aha moments for me, like when we actually see our kids interacting with the toys and they're doing what they were intended to do. And yeah, you yeah. know, now that our, our firstborns, my brother and my daughter, um, they're six years old and, you know, now we're starting to think like, okay, how do we continue appealing to kids? Because obviously they're yeah. growing the, the plush toy phase. So what are some other ways? So where I'm, I feel like, you know, even when I'm not working, I'm working because I'm observing my kids and I'm, I'm being inspired by right. what they're doing, what they're playing with, what's really capturing their attention. And, you know, if it's YouTube, right, I mean, that's, that's, that's a part of life now. So, okay, great. Then like, instead yeah. of fighting it, how can we be a part of that conversation? Yeah. I was just going to say, have you found that they, they've been successful at sharing the toys at all? Unfortunately, they don't have to share because we have a plethora of them. <laughs> you have an abundance of them? Yeah, yeah. If, if you lose one, don't worry. I got you covered. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the reality is, is that there's so many different modes of learning, and yet something that's very tangible, something that's, um, in fact, 
not necessarily based on a device or, or based mm-hmm. on um, something digital, you know, makes it in, in a way uh, something that's actually very palpable. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of sensory, you know, communication that's going on, whether they're playing with it by themselves or, or whether they're playing with their family members. I, I've always, I've asked this to others on, on the show as well, but I always think about all of these things, whether they're toys or art or, or mm-hmm. anything else, um, that these cultural expressions and, and almost like ambassadors, right, for the culture, that they're, these vehicles like a toy can serve kind of as both a mirror mm-hmm. and also the window, yes. right, where, where they are thinking a little bit of how are they mirroring, you know, those around them and what kind of window is it offering into um, the culture itself. How do you think your company is doing that for the Indian and the South Asian diaspora from both that idea of it being a mirror and, and a window? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, growing up, so I moved to America when I was eight years old. So I think my immigrant story is very similar to many other people's. I didn't have very many toys growing up, but in the, in the ones that I did have, you know, there were like the usual suspects like Barbie and like Connect Four games like that and stuff. And yeah. I never really saw my identity reflected in in the toys that I was playing with. And, you know, back then we didn't even have like YouTube or iPhone. So that is what, that was our mode of play, right? The toys that we had or imagination really. And these things weren't even really an issue to be honest until I became a parent myself. Because even right. when I was an aunt, before I had kids, I never thought like, man, it'd be great if we had some toys that like represent our culture. Because like I wasn't thinking from the, from the point of view of a mother. And it wasn't until I became one that it dawned on me that, okay, I'm no longer, you know, raising a kid in the 90s. Like I'm raising a kid in this yeah. generation and I'm not my mother's mother. So how am I going to approach this motherhood my way, you know, in a way that feels just genuine to who I am? Because if I try to be like my parents and take them to the Monday like every weekend as my parents still go, that's not who I am, right? But I know that, you know, incorporating our Hindu culture, our Hindu values is still important to me. So how do I kind of, you know, straddle both those worlds? And so that's where my brother really had gotten the idea of, well, would it be cool if there was a toy that basically represented our Hindu culture? And so we didn't invent the wheel, right? Obviously, we did not invent yeah. plush toys, but we took something that existed and put our own like Indian twist on it. And that's what's been really cool because like, you know, now that my kids are getting older, like they ask questions like, oh, so like we're Indian, right? I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> and like, so they don't, like, they've never been to India. So they don't understand like right. a lot of these things, like what it means to be American or Indian. So I try not to make those kinds of distinctions, but it's more about like, well, you know, these are all the gods. And like, so when they go to the temple, they instantly recognize all the different gods based on the toys that we have, because they know like Durga has the lion, they know that right. Ganesh has elephant head. So it's helping them teach and cor- make these correlations to like real yeah. world applications too. So, you know, I think kids nowadays are, are growing up with a completely different lifestyle than we did, because it's not like they're living this like Indian lifestyle at home and American outside. Like they're, Right. Like everything is just all the same to them. Well, and, that, and that's the that's the window, right? I mean, like the, the window there is, is that like, hey, this is exactly a reflection yes. in some ways of what the culture is. And the mirror is, is that, you know, you're right. This is a different mirror that we're looking at in 2023 than, you know, growing up in the 80s or 90s um, like that. I, I always wanted to walk into the store and at least see the keychain that said Abhai there that was never going to necessarily mm-hmm. happen but mm-hmm. you know perhaps the uh plush toy or the um, other products that you guys are doing are helping to navigate that a little bit better now for for kids like this and and i think you're right that it's integrated as opposed to you have to straddle two different lanes yeah. i mean how did you guys figure that diversifying at least the toy box was meaningful right so you know uh, having that that toy uh be the mode of or, or even the, the again the window into yeah. that and the gateway yeah. why why does that matter so much well if you think about it what is the one thing that every single child in the world well i i say that right now with with a very you know conscious of what's going on in the world but sure and you know, the one thing sure. that that most kids have access to when they are born is 
is toys, right? A plush teddy bear is like the one thing that like you usually see like in a nursery. And we knew that play is the universal language, that it doesn't really matter like how you play, but that's how kids grow. That's how they learn. I mean, as a pediatrician, I think you can attest to this more than anyone else. And we knew that we had to make it fun and accessible so that both the child and the parent is equally excited to, to, you know, get down and play with them. Because like, look, as a mom of three now, like I get it, you know, like sometimes you need like that, like open-ended, like unstructured play and stuff, but like you need yeah. to also give them that your undivided attention to do that. And that's yeah. what I love about our toys that they, there is no right or wrong way. Like, it's not like a game you have to win. And like, you know, you can have a tea party, you can take them to bed, you can read a story to them, however you want to let your imagination go. But we knew that if we started from an early age, if we planted the seeds early on, it would be that much more meaningful and they would foster a much deeper connection because, um, you know, I didn't want to have to necessarily wait until like kids were like five or six year old to introduce them. Right. To, like, These are our Hindu gods or this is our Indian culture. Like if, if it's a part of who you are from the very beginning, then it just becomes like that much more natural. I, I mean, I think that's, that's, that's amazing in, in the way that like you're having a lot more of that introduction earlier on. And there's, there's a lot of engagement, right? That's there for both kids and parents to, to share. That's a pretty tough needle, though, in 2023, the thread, right? Kind of living at that intersection of culture, spiritual expression, religion, faith, and consumerism. <laughs> and, and so, you know, how have you kind of navigated that part, especially when it comes to children who are developing, right? I mean, it's one thing to navigate that all unto itself. Now you yeah. throw in children and child development, you know, what, how, I'm sure that's, that hasn't been an easy road to, to tread down. No. So, I mean, you know, whenever you are uh, selling children's products, you, you understand that you actually have two customers. You have the decision maker, the parent, and you have the end user. So you have to appeal to both of them. So you have to make the product meaningful and educational to an extent enough. And also, you know, it has to be at the right price point because the first thing that I, as a parent look at is like, okay, how much is this? And how right. much play are they actually really gonna get out of it? Because I know sometimes, you know, with the flashing lights, like they look really cool and fun, but then like, they don't see light of day. It's your parental, it's your parental ROI. That's exactly. constantly going on. <laughs> that's a great phrase. I love that I'm gonna <laughs> use that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm always looking at as a parent. So, like, you know, what the great thing about, you know, being in this seat is that I really am both the, the target consumer for my own product. And I'm, I'm also the consumer and like the brand creator. Right. So like, I, I'm always looking at, okay, is this actually going to serve a purpose? Is, is this actually meaningful? Is this going to have a long shelf life? So those are the variables that I'm looking at. And of course, like from a kid's standpoint, you know, again, like we have like our kids and my nieces to, to kind of turn to, and we see, okay, like, you know, how often do they play with certain things? Like what kind of grabs their attention? Right. What makes one toy more fun and engaging versus another one? So we're constantly like in observant mode as well as just like, you know, parenting them. And, and that's where we get a lot of like our sort of market insights from just like by, yeah. by being parents. And I think if we hadn't been parents, we would not even be here because we would not have found a need, identified a need to even create something like this. I'm curious for you, do you consider yourself, and, and this is not an easy, easy one to articulate sometimes, but do you consider yourself a Hindu company? That is a good question. Um, we are at our root, a Hindu company. We are trying to branch out and be more of a cultural company, an Indian yeah. cultural company, uh, yeah. because we realize that many people identify themselves as spiritual, not necessarily religious, and that right. could perhaps be a little off-putting. But what's been really, I think, interesting to see unfold about our brand is that we appeal to people who sit on both ends of the extreme, people who consider yeah. themselves to be religious, and they're like, this is great. Like now this is a, is a great complimentary aid to what I've already been doing and trying to teach my kids. And those who are like, mm, I'm not really sure like where I fit in, but you know what? Like at least like this is a great gateway into like learning about the Hindu culture because like, you know, it's so low effort. It's just a plush toy, right? Like, it, it's kind of beautiful in that regard that you can make it what you want it to be. Sure. 
there's a democratization of like the how you apply it and what it means to you. I kind of liken it to, you know, the Amar Chitrakata stories in comic books. You know, they, they certainly tell a whole variety of stories, but they're, they're quite diverse in its application and, and how you think about that as well. In being this kind of steward mm-hmm. of that, the company that both you and your brother have built now was thinking of this as kind of a cultural vehicle, even a Hindu vehicle, especially after you garnered a lot more success. Was this surprising to you that people were in some ways kind of looking to looking to you, to the toy, to be that gateway and, and serve in some ways as kind of like, a, okay, well, there there is some almost like authority yeah. um, to this that like, hey, is that mantra the one that I should really be looking at and following? Yeah, I know. It, that's really interesting that you asked that because we've been in business for five years now. And uh, about three years ago, I launched this series on Instagram called Theology Thursdays. It's no longer exclusive just to Thursdays because I post it really when things come up. But it's a series that's intended to explain the the meaning behind some of the rituals, the traditions, the holidays that yeah. we celebrate. And again, that emerged as a own sort of a personal selfish need because you know, like, like, for example, you know, why do we like do these like pujas that we do for unluck me on the yeah. first day of Diwali? Or like, why do we touch people with the elders feet? Why do we right. always give that extra dollar? Like, right when we're gifting someone. <laughs> and it was like these That's random right. things that we just grew up doing blindly following our parents, never questioning, yeah. or if we did question, perhaps like we forgot. Right. And it's these questions are like now coming back again as a mother and like it, you know I would blindly just be doing these things and I'm like wait a minute why am I doing these things I know they were like hot and now they're ingrained in me but like why so I started sharing my learnings through this series and I've been doing it for for three years now and it's just gained so much momentum and it, and so much popularity that I think people do look to those posts on a weekly basis to either you know refresh what they've learned a long time ago, or just even to learn for the very first time. Yeah, and, and even almost to, to ask even more questions too, and, exactly. and that's always a, a really nice thing. Ha, have you found? I'm just you know in hearing this, have you found that there's been surprising linkages to connect generations where like you're actually musing about this? You're certainly like, hey, I, I did this because my my parents were doing this. I'm trying to teach my kids this. And have you found that the other two generations are now like perhaps linked even better together? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I I see, you know, so many people commenting on those posts saying like, oh my gosh, I I can't wait to go and like share this with my mom or I can't wait to go like and share this story to my kids. And these posts are obviously not intended for kids because kids are not on social media or at least like that, those at that age. Let's hope not, Um, yeah. Right. And so it's really fascinating to me that people are taking their learnings and, you know, bring them into their homes, even offices, because this is such like a great, you know, it's it's kind of done almost like an infographic kind of a manner that is the bite size of it makes it really easy to consume. and, and, And people just, I think, feel like, feel like satisfied oh okay now i finally can put this like why to rest because like i understand and there's actually meaning behind what i'm doing and i think that's something obviously kids can appreciate there maybe like will be less resistant to pushing back on like well i don't want to do this well like here's why we're doing it right right? yeah and 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 parents who perhaps like us have been blindly doing these things for years like they might also like learn it like oh wow look at that right (laughs) there actually was a scientific reason behind it who knew yeah well and i mean i see I was telling you earlier, I, I see my niece, you know, clutching her Ganesh toy. And then I see my sister with uh, the idea that like, hey, this is being a vehicle. And then I see, I see my parents actually, you know, watching and, and like appreciating that like, hey, there's a, a new kind of way for this education or even this cultural expression to actually yeah. happen. I, I'm curious for you as a parent, what has the kind of Modi toy journey perhaps made you have to unlearn? about yourself as a parent oh gosh well I will say that in trying to be a better business owner I feel like I've become less effective as a mother I don't know if I'm articulating that correctly but um yeah maybe effective isn't the right word but I you know I I give so like I treat my business like my baby like my fourth child and because I give so much 
care and attention to that. I feel like sometimes um, I take a backseat in terms of, you know, being more present with my kids. And I, I think it's the biggest irony in all of this because my daughter and my niece were the ones who inspired me and my brother to get on this crazy journey. So it was really parenthood that inspired us. But now as yeah. parents, you know, our parenting is suffering a little bit as a result. So here I am trying to, you know, impact the lives of thousands of children around the world keep you know forgetting about the three kids that i have in my own home not forgetting about them but you know like not not being there for them as much as i am trying to be for these other children so that i don't know if it's an unlearning but that's been like sort of the biggest aha moment for me i wonder if if you've had to rethink a little bit about like what you give yourself licensure to do right yeah. like this is an ambition of yours this is something that you you draw a lot of joy out of um, equally in the joy that you get from parenting, has it, uh, you know, for you, have you found yourself evolving as a parent, even in uh, like, in some ways, kind of appreciating and savoring the time that you do engage with your kids? Oh, absolutely. I have, I've had to learn maybe, maybe I don't know if this is unlearning or new learning, but I've had to learn that I have to make the moments matter. It's not so much about yeah. how much time I'm actually spending, but make sure that the time that we do spend together is meaningful that, you know, yeah. if I am like taking the time to take them somewhere, like for example, um, this last weekend, I took my, my older two kids to Gerba and we were like there, I think for maybe less than an hour, maybe 45 minutes because, you know, my younger daughter, she's three years old. She it's like way past yeah. her bedtime. So right. she was excited when we left the house because she got to dress up and everything. Um, but then she was like, not really having it. So I had right. to just, you know, I, I had to first of all go into like, you know, keeping that open mind that this is very like yeah. possibly like not going to be a very long night. And we were home like by like 930 that night. So I, as you can imagine, you yeah. know, going to Gerba and being home by 930. You know, like I, I, I embrace the fact that at least like I got to show them like, you know, that little like, you know, snippet of our culture because yeah. Gerba is one of those things you have to experience it like in person. Sure. You can't just be like, okay, we're going to do Gerba at home. <laughs> or, like, yeah, you can't, can't really watch the YouTube video on that. Exactly. It just doesn't give it justice. Right? No, not at all. And, and I wonder if the toys and the products and the books and the rangoli, like, you know, uh, may, make a difference there, right? It's just yet another way to connect and and another way to, you know, make a difference in that way. Like when you hear from parents, uh, aside from sales, right? Um, what, how do you actually like either measure or appreciate success? I think the biggest takeaway for me, you know, when I look back is going to be like the stories that I've heard from parents who tell me about, about, about like those moments where they were going through a really hard time and this you know, something like as simple as a toy, but which I feel like it's, it's a misnomer because it's so much more than that for many of, of these people. Um, just the other day, um, I, I ran to a customer of ours who came up to me with her six-year-old daughter, and she told me that she was born 25 weeks preemie. And mm, as a matter yeah. of fact, her two other kids, so she's got three kids, were also born at 25 weeks. I mean, what are the chances, right? And she said that um, obviously at that age, she was not allowed to give them any stuffed animals or plush toys. But when the time finally came, ours were the first ones that she brought home. And like that brought tears to my eyes, like hearing that story. And, and I mean, and I have countless stories like those, like, you know, when we first launched, I remember back in 2018, we received an email from um, someone in like South Carolina saying that, oh my gosh, like my, my sister-in-law like just had an accident and like she's pregnant and like now she's being rushed to the hospital and I want to like send her your toy. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, like these are the kinds of things you don't expect to come out of a toy brand, right? Because like, and that's what makes me feel like, no, we are so much more than that. What we're manufacturing may be toys, but what we're actually selling to people is hope and joy. And and that to me is, is our biggest, like, I think that's going to be our legacy. Well, and I mean, it it's solidifying relationships. It's forging new relationships. It's, you know, having people find both solace and, and real joy, um, as you mentioned, and, and on top of that, I think, uh, you know, adding a, a huge dimension of, of sort of cultural expression there too. 
you know, if someone's first picking up one of your products today and, you know, using whether it's a plush toy, whether it's the Rangoli uh, stickers or, or some of the books, you know, what, what questions or even curiosities do you hope they have? What, what kinds of thoughts do you think they have, you know, when they first are, are experiencing this? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I hope they, when they see our products for the first time, I hope first it just makes them smile because, you know, they just are so cute. And I hope that it's something that continues to inspire joy. And I hope that if, you know, once they take the time to learn what each of them symbolize, like Ganesh stands for new beginnings and, you know, Hanuman symbolizes strength and Durga symbolizes power and protection. I hope that they can see them as a friend and, and, you know, turn to them. And honestly, this applies to people of all ages because it's not like, you know, all of a sudden we're 40 years old and we stop needing a friend. We stop needing a shoulder to lean on. Um, so it's really all about, you know, how you choose to, um, you know, kind of find comfort in, in situations, whether, you know, it's, it's moments of joy or sorrow, but I hope that they continue to, to, um, to, to find comfort in that, in our toys. And I hope they see, that there is some something much bigger than all of us out there at the very least how you choose to practice religion is not what i'm here to preach but i, I do hope that everyone takes comfort in knowing that you know we are just a, such a small speck in this universe and that some things are just hard to make sense and, and you can't make sense of it but you have to trust that there is a you know there's sort of like that that what is that that invisible hand well I mean, this is making me want to just go ahead and get a comforting Ganesh or Hanuman toy for myself to, to understand better how I'm a speck in the universe. And yeah. more than anything else, I think it's bringing so much inspiration and joy and, and so many great windows and mirrors to people out there. Avani, thank you so much. This was such a treat to share a conversation with you, and I hope we can do this again in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Avani. And you can check out more at moditoys.com. Thanks again to you for listening. And wherever and however that might find you, please don't forget to offer a kind rating or review for Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing, and pass it along to your friends and family. Time goes by fast, so hug your children and take it slow. Till next time, I'm Abhay Dharnikar.